master fear ye their fear if the people of the world that do not have god if they are afraid and they have a kind of fear it says don't fear like them you have a god who is your father you have jesus who is your redeemer and you have the holy spirit who lives within you and abides within you and you have the promises of god and those promises of god are still yes and amen do not forget that that you're not alone i will be with you till the end of the world in isaiah chapter 41 i'm reading from verse 10. isaiah 41 reading from verse 10. it says in verse 10 fear thou not for i am with thee fear thou not for i am with thee if the lord is with you anything to fear you know as i as i read about a joseph uh, Joseph uh, was uh, the man that the young man that had uh, what did he have? Tell me out. Some of you are sleeping. I said, What did Joseph have? He had a dream. And as he saw that dream, now I want you to think. Now we can we can go back to the scriptures and we can think, we can reason. He told his brothers the dream. Because of that, they hated him. Does that hatred, is that hatred strong enough to cancel the dream? Not when God has given the dream. That's why we don't worry about the hatred. And about whatever they might plot. And now here he was coming. Here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him. Wait, let's kill him. Will they be able to kill him? If they killed him, how will the word of God be fulfilled? Will they be stronger than God? They cannot be stronger than God. And eventually, they said, okay, don't kill him. They'll change their mind. I said, they'll change their mind. And then, eventually, they put him in the pit. The Ishmaelites were coming. And he said, hey, we know what we're going to do. There's no point killing this young man. We're going to sell him to the Ishmaelites. And they sold him to the Ishmaelites. And the Ishmaelites took him where? They took him to the place where the dream will be fulfilled. And, but... He didn't have to pay the fare to go there. He had free transportation to go there. God knows what he's doing. And if you understand what actually happened, there was nothing wrong in what happened. Yes, those people had the intention. They knew what they wanted to do, but it was just free transportation. And then eventually, he was uh, in Potiphar's house. And the Bible says, and God was with him. Because he himself, he was with God. He said, there is nothing to fear. I'm going on a journey. And this happens to be a milestone. If you understand that everything that happens to you in life is just a milestone. And then you go to the next milestone. But you say, the Potiphar's wife told a lie against him. And they put him in the prison. Hey, what are you thinking about that? You know what they should have done? He was just a slave. His mother was not there. His father was not there. And the masters of those days, they had the power of life and death. They could have killed him. They didn't kill him. And they sent him to prison. But Joseph, are you not sad? Are you not worried and fearful now? See what is happening. They sent you to prison. He said, sir, do you know the kind of prison they sent me to? VIP prison. Where the servants of Pharaoh, where they were. If they sent me to another kind of prison, how would I be able to see those people and interpret their dreams for them? God is on time. This is another milestone. And then he interpreted the dreams. After interpreting the dreams, he told one of them, he said, you are going to be set free. Just three days. Remember me as you get over there. And then the man got there. Did he remember him? Isn't that a tragedy? No, that's not a tragedy. You know why? If the man remembered him when Pharaoh did not have any dream and he just released Joseph, they released him into nothingness. They must release him at the right time. Now Pharaoh had a dream. And the man said, now I remember. That's the right time to remember Joseph. And then he came and eventually Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And then Pharaoh said, can we find any other man? apart from this man and then the dream became fulfilled meanwhile there was famine in the land where the brothers were and they came he recognized them you will recognize them and they fell on the ground they said we are your servants and joseph he knew the dream was fulfilled 
when God has given a word, all the enemies will do is just to send you milestone after milestone in the direction of the fulfillment of the dream. That's the reason why we don't fear anything. We say whatever is happening today or whatever happened yesterday, everything is going to lead us to the climax when the dream will be fulfilled. If you understand that, in fact, and there's, we will do less of casting out. Oh, if, what, what, what if Joseph had been praying? Oh God, this my brothers change their mind. No, don't change their mind, God. Because they are the instruments God will use to send you to the place of the fulfillment of the dream. Oh, Lord, look at this potty pass a wife and look at all this, all this big lie he, she wants to tell against me. Please, don't let him tell a lie. If he don't, she doesn't tell the lie, how do you get to the place to interpret the dream of Pharaoh? Allow them to do what they want to do. Allow them to go the direction they want to go. Everything they do and every direction they go will lead you to the point of fulfillment in your life in Jesus' name. You see, when you know all this, then you know there's nothing to fear. When you know all this, you know that there's nothing to cast out. Because the things you are trying to cast out, that the things God will use to actually get you to the place you need to get to. And you will get there. I said you will get there. I don't have time tonight, but if I had time, I would have, you know, I would have just told you quite a, a lot of things. Here is uh, Edison, Thomas Edison. He was in school. As he was in the school, then uh, the teacher said, this is a no good boy. This one can never do anything. And sent him away and said, parents, take care of him. Let him go to the farm. And the mother said, don't worry about it, uh, Edison. And uh, that man became a great inventor. That teacher that sent him out of school, I don't even know his name. I don't, I don't know his worry about. But the one they sent out of school became a great inventor. You see, when you understand that, then you understand whatever they do, and however they act, will get you to the place you need to get to. And there is nothing to worry about. And there is nothing to fear. When there is nothing to fear, if you are fearing, you are just tormenting yourself unnecessarily. Look at that verse 10 again. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded they shall be as nothing and they that strive with thee tell me out loud how do you have all these promises and you're still afraid if anybody wants to hurt you they want to hurt themselves anybody that says he wants to destroy joseph wants to destroy himself anybody that says he wants to drown a man that is raised up by God. He wants to drown himself. And the Lord says, I'm with you. And there is nothing that anybody does, nothing anybody plants anywhere behind the cut in the forest, in the, in the depth of the sea. Can hold any water at all. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee, and they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a sin of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. The Lord will help you. I said the Lord will help you. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1. But now thus says the Lord that created thee, O, o Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters. Notice the words passing through, passing through, passing through. We don't stay there. I said we don't stay there. We don't dwell there. Don't think, look at the deep waters. We're passing through. And we're going to pass through. Have you read in your Bible? It came to pass. It came to pass. It came so that it will pass away. It's not going to remain. Why are we so worried and we're so anxious? And we say, you know, sometimes you try to cross the bridge before you reach there. That's, that's our problem. You imagine, what if this happens? Can I, can I bear that? What if this happens? Can I get? Don't worry. Get to the bridge before you cross it. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not sit down. 
months before they got into the fire. What if we get into the fire? What are we going to do? You will never know what you are going to do until you get there. And the Lord will not tell you the details of how you'll be able to survive until you get there. But when the time came, they got into the fire, the fourth person, the fourth man, that he is uh, the son of man, the son of God, he came, he showed up. You wouldn't know that before you go to that situation. What if uh, Daniel was sitting back and he said, if I'm ever thrown into the lion's den, what will I do? Daniel, you are, you are wiser than that. Don't talk about that. When you get there, the Lord will take care of you. And so don't be like Job, imagining what if this happens to me, what if that happens to me. Don't even think about that. Just live your life one day at a time. And the grace for today is available for today. And God's grace is sufficient for every day. Therefore, you are not worried about what will happen tomorrow. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. When tomorrow comes, God will take care of you tomorrow. And so that's why we're reading here, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through, where? Walkest through the fire. Walkest through the fire. Then it says, Thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Can I have an amen there? Yeah. Point number three, now deliverance and dominion over fear. Deliverance from fear and dominion over fear were delivered already. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah 44, I'm looking at verse 2. Thus says the Lord that made thee, that formed thee from the womb, which will help thee fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, for I have chosen thee. We're chosen. And because we're chosen, we're special in the hands of God. In verse 8, fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that, from that time, and I've declared it, ye are uh, even my witnesses, is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God beside him. I know not any. We're looking at chapter 40 of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40. We're looking at verse 9. O Zion, that bringeth good tidings, get thee up unto the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift up, lift it up. Be not afraid, will not be afraid again. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. That was set us free from fear. Behold your God. Behold the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. Now we're looking at Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52. The Lord has showed us tonight that there is nothing to fear. Whether in the depths or in the height, on the mountaintop or in the valley, in the sea or in the fire, wherever it is and whatever it is, there's nothing to fear because God says, I am with you. He will always be with us. Now what do you do? As there is in your response to what we have heard, your response to the definition and description of fear, your response to the divine declaration to the fearful, and your response to the deliverance from fear and dominion from fear. What do you do now? Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1. Awake, awake. Put on thy beautiful garments. O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. And then it says, The holy city, for henceforth, there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. The Lord will build a hedge around you. And all those things trying to come in to harass your life, everything will be taken care of, will be gotten rid of in Jesus' name. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. You see what we're trying to say others should do for us. That they should lose the band for us. They should get us up. They should lift us up. The Lord said, do it yourself. Shake yourself from the dust and arise. And then lose thyself from the bands of thy neck. O captive daughter of Zion. Tonight, we're going to shake off everything shakeable. 
all those things that harassed your mind, and to start what you are going to relax and say, how foolish I was. You know, sometimes you, you ought to be humorous and make fun of yourself and say, what was I afraid about, uh, you know, in my life? Why was I afraid about that and about that? I said, this thing will kill me. And that was about maybe one year ago. And here you are still alive and going stronger. And then you just look at yourself and say, how could I have said that? How could I have thought like that? I know that with all the water that has gone under the bridge, and I'm still standing, I'm still on my feet. I know that whatever is coming tomorrow, God will take care of it. And whatever is going to come for the rest of your life, God will take care of it in Jesus' name. Now we know there is nothing to fear. I said, now you know there is nothing to fear. Rise up. Awake, awake. Put on your strength and put on your beautiful garment and understand that victory is yours already. And understand that what the Lord has said will be fulfilled. All those enemies, if they are there, they're going to be destroyed in Jesus' name. I want you to just thank the Lord for what he has done. There's nothing to cast out now. Just thank the Lord. Just thank the Lord. Just praise the Lord. He has opened your eyes. He has given you understanding. Now you know he's taking care of you. Now you know. When you pass through the fire, he'll be with you. And when you pass through the river, you'll not be drowned. Now you know. And because of what you know, and because of the truth that is not painted in your heart, you know that all those fears are fantasies. False experiences appearing real. There's nothing to them. Faceless enemies afflicting your reasoning faculty. Nothing to them. Nothing to fear. Neither man nor woman. Neither giant nor champion. The frequently expected adversity realized. Nothing to fear. Look up to the Lord. Are you a child of God? Are you a sheep in the fold? A member of the body of Christ? A chosen servant? A chosen disciple? A friend of Christ? He promised he'll take care of you. He promised he'll take care of you. He promised he'll take care of you. He's taking care. He's watching over you. He's watching over you. All the fantasized exaggeration above reality. Get rid of them. And don't torment yourself, torture yourself unnecessarily. Fierce emotions, arousing restlessness. Are you not the one making yourself restless and sleepless unnecessarily? What Christ said will be done, will be done. What he said will be fulfilled, will be fulfilled. And because you know that heaven and earth will pass away, but the words of Christ, the promise of the Lord will never pass away. That's why you have confidence and trust in the Lord, knowing he will do what he said he will do. And you will not live day and night, month after month, and year after year, fearing as if you are an orphan. You have an heavenly father. You have Jesus Christ, your Savior, 